Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. I am going to create the cutest little fairy acorn cottage. Um, this is kind of related to my fairy mushroom house, only this is where they go for uh, vacations during the summer. Um, so I am using a molded stone using the molds from Happy Dotting Company. Uh, it just happens to be from the Multi Mold, which is a uh, set of a few of them, different shapes and sizes, and um, they're flatter stones. This kind of resembles the Santorini stone that I used in uh, my Fairy Mushroom House tutorial, which is linked in the description below, just in case you haven't seen it. It's one of my most popular ones, um, that and the Quiet Little Owl. So this one might be fun. This is like the, the summer getaway place for our fairies. They're, they're bored of their mushrooms once in a while. Um, so they need somewhere to go for vacation. So that's what I'm going to do. And today I've sketched it on with pencil. I haven't put a base coat of white yet, although to make things a lot easier for yourself, you could do two coats of white paint, then paint your acorn on over top. Um, but I wasn't really that concerned about having a white background behind the brown. So I'm going to do my, because I know I'm going to make mistakes and I go outside of the lines and everything while I'm sponging. So I'm going to have to fix it anyway. So I'm just going to do the outside part of the acorn, acorn uh, afterwards. So we'll be doing a white base coat and stuff afterwards. So for this part of my acorn, I'm using maple brown. Um, I will list all the colors in the description of the video um, so that you don't have to worry about whether or not you can read what my bottle says before I swipe it away from you. Um, I get a lot of messages asking like, what color did you use? What are you using? What are you using? It's all in the description of my video. And if it isn't, it's because I lost my mind momentarily <laughs> and you should remind me um, but normally I have all the information you need on the tutorial that we're doing in the description of every video so I used maple brown for the bottom I've done a couple of coats of that and I'm using a dark real brown on the top um, and I'm also going to change the colors a little bit. I'm adding a little bit of white to my maple brown here at the bottom. I want up near the ridge of the top of the acorn, I want that to be lighter. And then I want, as I go down the acorn, I want it to be that maple brown. Um, so you'll see me work on that a few times. I'm using a sponge. It's, it's a finger sponge. <laughs> I will leave a link in the description of where I found my finger sponges. Um, just Amazon, Amazon Canada. Um, but look up finger sponges and you'll probably be able to find them uh, where you are, hopefully. So I have a nice dark brown up top. I'm going to lighten a little bit of it using camel, camel brown. And then I'm actually going to uh, make a design over top of all of this. You're not really going to see it. So don't really be too worried about this part. I'm just kind of keeping the outside brown, dark brown, and I lightened the inside with that camel color a little bit mixed with brown. So um, I, I want to lighten this part here properly. Like I said, I was going to do. Now it looks kind of shiny. <laughs> right under the ledge of the cap of the acorn. I'm not using technical terms. Now I'm doing chunky diamonds. So they're chubby, okay? They're not skinny pointed diamonds. They're a little bit chunky um, and they're, they're beautiful. They're absolutely gorgeous. I prefer them chunky um, or chubby either way. Um, but that's the best way for me to describe what I'm painting here. They're like little chubby diamonds. They're not quite as pointy as what a diamond shape would normally be. Um, and I'm using my darkest brown to, to make this design. And if it gets all lumpy and bumpy at the top, that's good. You want those bumps of, of your little chubby diamonds. You want those bumps to be raised up a little bit at the top. It'll help with the uh, making it look a little bit more realistic. <laughs> but not much, not much. We're going to let... 
the maple brown dry on the bottom and we're gonna let that design dry that we, we just painted at the top. And we're gonna work on the outer part now. This is where I'm going to uh, fix everything, make it all white, nice couple coats of white. Then I'm gonna add some ocean view, which is gonna go on with a paintbrush first just to get it around the edges. I am working much slower than this Keep that in mind, I've sped this up so that the video isn't three hours long. It was a very long tutorial and it still is. Um, so I won't be showing you stuff at my desk this time, um, but I'll show some stuff at my desk in a separate video. How about that? Um, but this time there's not enough time because it's a super long video. This is worth it though, it's worth it. So on top of my ocean view, which I've kind of like, uh, softened with a little bit of white as well. Uh, I kept it ocean blue, but then added with white on a sponge in just some areas just to soften that blue just a teeny bit. Kind of looks like clouds in the sky, um, so it looks really nice. And if you haven't seen me use Hologram 2796 in a while, I miss it too. It's a gorgeous, sparkling, uh, acrylic paint from folk art. It's absolutely gorgeous. It Look at that. Oh, it looks so beautiful. We don't have a Santorini stone, but our stone is going to sparkle anyway. That's, that's what I love about these uh, Happy Dotting Company molds, because you can create all sorts of different shapes and sizes of stones to work on, and they're so much fun. And this one's a great one. I love this one. You can do so much with this size. Um, so our the bottom pointy part of our acorn is in the ground. That's the basement. Uh, we're not going to work on the basement today, um, but um, just know that the reason the acorn isn't tipping over is because the bottom part of it is buried into the ground because this is a permanent residence um, and they visit here constantly on the nice season. So I've added with a little sponge some gold in all those little compartments that we created with our chubby diamonds. Um, that's just to give it some texture, make it look kind of cool, kind of pretty. You know we're going to add gold and glitter and sparkles, right? You knew that when you saw this, I hope. <laughs> I need to satisfy all of my creative needs by using all the things that I love. <laughs> so we're going to use glitter, gold, color, of course, we're going to use purple because that's my favorite color. Um, but we're going to add some Swarovski crystals. And uh, it's going to look so pretty. I can't wait. So I'm using something circular, something small, a little container, uh, just so that I can get like a half circle there for my door on my little acorn cottage. Um, camp or cabin or whatever it is you like to call them, I'm calling it a cottage. Um, so I'm going to make sure that I put a nice primed coat of white. It's just acrylic paint, but it's like a primer. We want to get rid of that dark background again because we've painted the whole acorn uh, first. And it's just easier to make it uh, when you're blending and stuff to start with the blended background first and then work your way on top. So I have a nice coat of white paint. I am going to use a sponge to sponge it out to get rid of any of my brush strokes. Um, and then afterwards, we're going to add some purple. I'm going to just let that dry first. And I'm going to have some cute little windows. They're going to look like little eyes, little eyes and a mouth, almost like, well, right now it looks like our acorn is yawning, is <laughs> sleeping and yawning. And uh, after it's going to look like uh, little acorn kid that's yelling at me. So, <laughs> cause we're going to open its eyes. I'm using a helix tool, which is a really cool tool. If you want to look them up, it's called a helix H E L I X. And you can, uh, work on your rocks with doing all sorts of stuff with the helix. It's, it's a really helpful tool. Um, so I've done some cute little half circle eyes, just like the mouth. Although the mouth looks huge, um, it's actually windows and a door, but I'm calling it eyes and a mouth because <laughs> that's exactly what it looks like. And don't tell me it doesn't. Um, so we're going to work on the door a bit more. I'm going to use eggplant purple 
and um, over top of this two coats of white so it's nice and bright in the background there and my paint is going to go right on top of it and I'm going to make sure it's all painted on with brush strokes. So I'm actually making slats in the wooden door with the brush strokes. I want to see that. Don't worry about the bottom here. Don't worry. That's going to be grass. It's not going to be there anymore. But now I have, I can see through some of that eggplant paint through to the white. Um, but the best part is, is I can see the, the brush strokes and those are now slats in the door. Good idea, huh? <laughs> so I am going to use my uh, blue again the same blue that I used on the outside that ocean view I'm going to sponge a little bit of that using my blending brush and if you don't know what that is I do have a tutorial in the description of this video to show you how to create yourself a little blending brush which is like a tiny little sponge um, so that you can get into all those little places um, without needing to make a mess because you only have big sponges. <laughs> so I've created a couple of different sizes of blending brushes just for this reason. So I'm keeping it light blue. I've added some white in there so that uh, they aren't the exact same color as the outside of the acorn cottage. I've got a nice thick line of eggplant purple around the outside and along the bottom. And I'm using some dark brown to go around the windows just a quick line uh, it's okay if it's thicker it's fine um, it'll look fine because it's a windowsill so I'm putting the uh, cross in the windowsill the wood slats and we're gonna make the windows shiny a little bit later using some watercolor paint that I made uh, myself which I will be adding some more watercolor paints to my shop this weekend hopefully. Um, they're not quite ready yet, but they will be this weekend. So make sure you stay tuned to my shop, my Etsy shop, and uh, don't miss out because there's some really cool multi-chrome and uh, color shifting uh, watercolor paints that are going in. Now we need hinges on our beautiful door. So I'm going to do some little fancy uh, hinges and we're going to have a little bit of gold accent to these as well. Uh, really simple hinges. You can just look up what fairy door hinges look like um, and you can create your own little design. Um, you could do like a, a pop out in the center of the door where there's like uh, glass and um, also like iron or or whatever you want to call it. <laughs> you can have like a really nice uh, center window for your door if you want to. But this is their summer cottage. And I'm just going to hang up some fresh fairy flowers on the door on a little nail. Um, but you can definitely decide what you want to do with yours. This is all optional. So we're going to let our door dry. We're going to let our hinges dry because we're going to put some gold on them. Um, and right now I want to create some sparkleberry bushes, which in the fairy world, they are real. Don't come for me. <laughs> sparkleberry. So they are just green circular bushes. Um, if you add a top one on that wet one with two, it'll look like a snowman. So I'm not going to. You can do them different sizes, different uh, shapes. It's totally up to you. Um, but I'm just going to have one small sparkleberry bush and one larger one. And we're going to add some grass. Right now, I'm just using a paintbrush to cover that entire area with my darkest green. You can still see through it. Um, so I'm going to sponge it on and make sure that I have a couple coats of that dark green before I start working on grass. We're going to be using my fine lining brush, which I also have a tutorial for, uh, to do the grass, and it's super easy. Um, this is my fine lining brush here. I'm just putting some gold on the doorknob and on the hinges now that that black is dry. I'm going to have to do a couple of coats of the green on the bushes, and then we're going to be adding, you, you guessed it, Swarovskis <laughs> to our sparkleberry bushes. Um, 
so yeah, if you don't like sparkleberry bushes, you can do whatever you want. You can add flowers. You can do a vine um, with a lattice up the one side. You can do stairs coming down from the front. Um, little uh, stepping stones coming from the door. It's totally up to you. Uh, what we have behind our little cottage is a lake and a dock and uh, some lawn chairs to sit on the end of the dock and just watch the loons go by um, with some mist coming up off the lake in very early mornings. That's when I would be out there. Um, I'm an early riser and the early bird catches the worms. So I would be out there bright and early when there's still uh, fog coming up off the lake. Uh, but that's what's behind our cottage. We can't see it, but it's there. You can imagine whatever you want yours to look like. Um, so now I'm going to add some more grass while I'm still waiting for my sparkle berry bushes to dry. I'm using different flavors of green, so different shades, light, dark, uh, bright green as well. Right now I'm just using classic green, but you will see a couple of different shades of green in this grass once I'm done. It's tedious, and all I'm doing is like flicking little hairs Looks like little hairs of green, uh, green grass hairs. That's what they are. And um, yeah, by the time we're done, it looks like a lawn that might need to be cut very soon. Um, but not in May. We're going to let those bees eat all the bugs and bees. We're going to let them all eat this month. And then we're going to cut our grass in June. <laughs> anyway... Now I'm adding bright green. So you're gonna see like a, a very slight change to the grass. It's just gonna get a little bit highlighted, I guess you could say with, with lighter colors of, of grass, lighter blades. Um, but you do what you want with your grass. It's totally up to you. It's all an option. So I'm just giving a nice dark outline. I'm gonna outline the entire uh, cottage with black. Not the trees, not the grass, um, but everything's going to be cleaned up with a nice fine black outline. Um, but first I'm going to add some lime green plant here behind this sparkleberry bush. Going to add a little bit of bright green on top of it. Simple. Looks, looks kind of like a feather, um, but it's a plant, I assure you, in fairyland. <laughs> There are any kind of plants you want in Fairyland and as much glitter and gold too. So that's why I love it. All right. Now I'm going to do some little cottage lights. They're just going to be some nice, warm, glowing uh, string lights that I'm going to put up here. Um, it's, it's evening, but they're going to come on anyway, and they're going to lighten up um the front of the house there the front of the cottage it's gonna look super cute warm and inviting and i love i love string lights oh on everything i got the cutest string lights for my trailer they're all multicolored, like paper lantern string lights and i absolutely love them um they're like the favorite part of me going somewhere in the trailer so i wanted to put string lights up on our little fairy acorn cottage and I'm going to use a little bit of daffodil yellow and a little bit of moon yellow mixed together really good and I'm going to just put dots um, just below the black dots that I put so it looks like it's actually holding a light bulb that little black part is holding our light bulbs now we're going to have to let these dry for a little while because then we're going to make them look like they're turned on a little bit more uh, but until then, we need our triple thick uh, glaze or glue, any kind of glue that you have at your desk that will turn clear when it's dry. Um, get out your dotting tools or just put little dots of glue onto your sparkleberry bushes and get some really small flat back crystals to put on there. And if you don't want to do that, you can do little berries. You can use red paint or you can do... Um, berries made out of glitter acrylic paint um, just put little dots of glitter there it's totally up to you what you want to do but I always have a large amount of crystals at hand <laughs> at my desk <laughs> and I'm not sorry uh-uh no way <laughs> 
If you hear any annoying banging sounds, that is my neighbors. I believe they are fixing their driveway. I'm not really sure, but it's very, very loud and it makes it very, very hard for me to work. So I apologize. So I'm going to speed this up. I'm adding a whole bunch of sparkle berries to my sparkle berry bushes. And I'm going to add some of my homemade watercolor. Like I said, uh, someone asked me recently, how do you control the flow of water in these water pens? And the answer is simple. I don't. <laughs> I don't fill them up with water because too much water comes out at once for me and I can't control the flow. So I just dip it in some distilled water and control the flow that way. So whenever you're using these water brushes, they might not be good for when you're wanting to accentuate your acrylic paint with it. Um, just dip it in water that way. You can control how much water is getting in your paint and uh, it makes it a lot easier. So this is just about ready, but I think I would like to add just a little bit more purple to my door. I'm going to use some metallic purple watercolors, uh, just gorgeous, and I'm just going to put it in between the slats. So where you see the gold line, we're not going to touch the gold line with watercolor. We're just going to put it down the center of those wood slats just to once again give it a little bit more texture. It's going to look like it has more texture because of that. Um, and it'll look totally amazing once I seal it with resin. I promise you. Now, the next thing I'm going to do now that my yellow light dries or my yellow dots are dry, I'm going to sponge off as much as possible my yellow paint off of my blending brush. I want a very small amount of yellow on my blending brush. And I'm just kind of sponge it on just on the outside. It's okay if you touch it, if you go right on top of that little yellow dot, but it just kind of makes it look like they're turned on when you give them a little glow, just a little bit. So it's hard to tell right now, but I did give each light a little glow. Now for the door, you can put a wreath on the door. You can put a window in the door like I was talking about before. Um, but I've decided I'm going to hang some fairy eucalyptus and lavender from a little nail on the door um, that we picked fresh. And we're, we're hanging it up to show anyone who decides to stop by. So I'm going to mix together some classic green and some teal and I'm doing two sprigs of, this isn't te technical terms, by the way, two sprigs of eucalyptus. Um, and it's going to be hard for you guys to see really because of the glare. Um, but you'll be able to see it much, much better. Once I seal it with resin, I will, I'll show you everything. Okay. Now I'm going to use a lighter green and I'm going to bring down two sprigs for lavender. So I'm going to put little bits of light lavender on these sprigs of light green, which you can't see, looks ridiculous. And I'm gonna add some regular lavender, just normal lavender, little bits of that on the light lavender. And it just looks like a big old mess. But there's the, the nail that we hung it on. And I've uh, put a little bit of gold on that nail. Outlining the doorknob, making sure the door is outlined so that it looks like it would actually be separated from the house. Um, everything's looking, I think, like it's ready to go in its resin bath. Shiny windows, sparkle bushes, sparkling background, lots of gold. I think we are ready. There's that lavender. You see it? Lavender and eucalyptus. Beautiful. So I'm going to let it sit in its resin bath. But I didn't for long. It's still wet because I wanted to show it to you guys right away. Look at how beautiful this is. Using the gold in certain spots gives it texture. Using the glitter in certain spots makes it just a little more fancy. 
and watercolors and Swarovskis. I think this turned out super cute. What do you think of my fairy acorn cottage? Please let me know in the comments below. I will be back very, very soon, guys. I hope you've had fun with it. I will see you again soon. Don't forget to hit the like button. Don't forget to make sure you're still subscribed because YouTube has robots that unsubscribe people. So make sure you're still subscribed and share. Bye, guys.